expecting that. So I am absolutely delighted, delighted, delighted today to uh, have Carola Stieber, but I'm going to pass it over to Mary Lee Hardenberg. She is our current vice president of the Sacred Dance Guild, and she is going to be introducing uh, Carola. So it's over to you, Mary Lee. Yes, I'm, I'm thrilled to welcome uh, Paramjyoti Karola Stieber. Uh, she uh, grew up in southern Germany and started studying dance ballet as a, as a child and is uh, now a dancer, a choreographer, a teacher, and now she's a film director. So um, she has been uh, interviewed as part of the luminaries of the Sacred Dance Guild. And you can see her entire interview on our Sacred Dance Guild YouTube channel. So without further ado, I am extending a warm welcome to Paramjyoti Karola. So blessings. Thank you so much. Thanks to the Sacred Dance Guild and all its members. And thanks for all of you for attending this amazing creation which is super exciting <laughs> it's a blessing that this guild exists and that you seem to find people who give their lives to dance and especially to a dance that is more than entertainment or fun there's a deeper light of fire in the heart that is nurtured by i think what most of us are looking for and what i would like to invite you in today is a journey a journey into the heart a journey to find what it actually is the most intimate of all relationships i also want to open this meeting at least halfway so that we can go in a mutual conversation either with questions and answers or with your own discoveries of sharing because i'm not a fan of monologue i am looking at you to pick up the energy and to see where our journey wants to go so if some of you think you want to turn on your videos i can be even more connected to you my entire work <laughs> thank you my entire work is actually to pick up the energy of the so-called audience and to to dance with that from the heart and from heart to heart and from different cultures and religions and spiritual groups to the next this is, seems to be my mission in this life so why was I invited to the film festival? I think because I made this documentary, which is at the same time a modern fairy tale. I want to use my filmmaking as kind of a teaser for our journey into the heart or into whatever that most intimate of all relationships means to you. The film is also made in that way Although it speak individually to all of us, some are causing a very similar uh, images in our psyche and some interpretations vary quite a lot. It's beautiful to hear the comments of the audience and to see how everybody sees the same creation if not even creator, behind whatever story is being told in our own lives or in the film or in the dance. So let me give you a brief introduction to the film. Let's start with the film. And once you see that, I think you also see who is behind the film and who is behind the one who is behind the film. <laughs> That's my main intention to, to in India they say darshan, to have people who watch the film tune to that which touches them deeply 
and deepest in the heart to become a literal witness there is um this life who are you tuned strings of my body instrument, the subtle, unstruck sound I meditate upon resonates and blossoms out through my movements to celebrate the most intimate of all relationships. Yes. yes, and that was a complete devotion to mm -hmm. And they God. were still called virgins. In the Upanishads, wird Sexualität definiert als der Bezug auf ein Du hinzu. Wenn dieses Du, dieses Gegenüber, noch ein menschliches Du ist, ein innerweltliches Du, dann ist es ein Kleben bleiben im Vorläufigen. <lacht> Man hat ja eine große Sehnsucht nach Orientierung, wenn man sich ins Unbekannte begibt. Wenn du dich auf die Seite Gottes oder auf die Seite der Menschen stellen müsstest, stell dich auf die Seite der Menschen, denn da ist doch Gott. through dance, you break this. You break the cycle of expectation, which sometimes I think is more dangerous than the cycle of violence. Diese Welt, wo jedes Wort nur Gesang ist. Es ist diese Welt, wo jeder Schritt nur Tanz ist. Dorthin zielt jede Sehnsucht.
Thank you. What you saw now has been created about six and a half to seven years ago in the beginning when we started the film project. And it is made with the material that we had at the time. And some of it you will find in the actual trailer that we will show later on. And why I want to open our meeting today with those two snippets is to show if there's an inspiration, how it starts and how it develops. This was like the spark and later you see the flesh and more body to it. And the entire journey was also to follow an inspiration that was very strongly intuitive. I will tell you the moment of conception of the idea to make a film. And for 12 years, I wasn't thinking about it. And suddenly it came very strong. Now you start this film project by spirit. Nobody externally told me to do so. And again, it needed more flesh to the bones, means who was going to be the director, who was going to be the cinematographer and so on. So the moment of inspiration was in India. It was one of my first visits in India in a very simple village where I was in a gathering of about five to six elderly men. And the one who inspired me to come to this village, who has been my teacher for many years, he said, bring your gungurus. These are the little footbells, just in case that you want to dance. So very shy because I was not familiar at all with this culture. I brought my little gungurus and put them next to me. And I sat on the ground like everybody else. And the eldest of the gathering, very sneakily, he grabbed the ankle bells. He put them around his ankles and he got up on his walking stick because he could hardly walk anymore. And he started stamping rhythmically around his walking stick. And my gaze was from the from sunburned hard ground, dust came up along his legs and the, the little cloth he had around his legs, lungi, his upper body and his gaze, his eyes were half open, half closed, his mouth open, hardly any teeth left. And he was in very tender and slight ecstasy. And it seemed for no reason. And above his head, the white open blue sky. I have not had such a picture seen in Europe anywhere. And I was deeply touched how the people in this village and this man could connect to some source of Glückseligkeit in Deutsch, Ananda in Hindi, bliss in English. <laughs> To, to a very tender bliss, despite the decay of his body, despite, you know, the situation of the hard ground they live on, it was very touching. And that moment, I thought these pictures that my soul is so much feeding off from and learning, I want to share with a broader audience, with more people than who can afford to travel with me to different countries, or who is coming to a workshop in this or that country. So the, the answer, so to say, was you have to make a film. 12 years passed, I wasn't thinking about it, and suddenly again came this inner calling, let's start now. I couldn't find the director, so I did it myself with the support of the cinematographer. And in a team of two people, we made this film traveling through 12 different countries and following my intuition. Eckhart brought the knowledge from the film business and I brought a great innocence that he was astonished by because he said anybody who goes through the school of filmmaking, they will not come with this innocence because they already have a lot of imprints of how to approach a project. So this mixture made it, I guess, a very exceptional film that went through German cinema tour, but only through the art house scenery and a special crowd. 
Mm, let me give you some examples from the backstage before we watch the trailer. I was in Turkey looking for the tear of the dervish that is flowing for not any worldly reason. And I had seen it with my physical eyes and I wanted the camera to catch it. We couldn't catch it <laughs> because it was a sacred ritual. And anytime the Sheikh said, now you have permission everybody to film for half an hour, the mood changed and we could not enter that sacred space. Nevertheless, this adventure made me very creative. I was looking for the white horse all around the world. I couldn't find the white horse for the scene until I came back to my parents' village and there it was. A beautiful white stallion and I had the dreamy childish image that I want to sit on it without any gear and gallop over the summer grass. And the owner said, well, I'm not sure about that, but you can start playing with each other. And it was impossible with this horse. He was so fiery that I, I got really afraid and I thought I can't even manage from the ground this horse. How could I possibly go on it and ride it without any gear? You will see in the film, there is a scene with a black horse the owner of the black horse made everything possible, everything impossible possible with the black horse so that I learned from her to actually meet the white horse in a playful mood and we entered to dance together, which I could have never come up with my own thinking to dance with a horse. I had never done before and after. So are these stories just to tell you how life was giving some pictures and taking away other pictures. So from my entire script, we had to be very creative and changing upside down. And sometimes I really was hitting the edges and I started praying and in beautiful moments, it was very obvious I had to let go. It was not in my control. It was not in my power or hand. And miraculously, thank God we could finish the project And let us now watch the trailer before we enter this dialogue of adventure to dig into what does it mean to you that most intimate of all relationships. and how much I love to inhabit every cell of my body. It is something so intimate which reveals itself. purpose of Devadasis was this, that how you can really communicate yourself with the Divine. In my dream, I heard the words, you are the whore of God. Die Bezeichnung für diese Tempeltänzerinnen, die Harine oder Hore oder Hori. Das heißt, wir sehen hier die, die Wurzel des auch im Deutschen vorhandenen Begriffes Hure, des Wortes Hure, der in diesem Kontext ein Ehrentitel oder ebenfalls ein respektverdienender Titel war. So 
the dance, they learned each secret of the life. not body you are a soul and soul is the supreme power and supreme power is the god under the sky we all are one Before we go into a dialogue, I invite everybody to, if you like, close your eyes or have them open and connect with your breath, connect your breath to your heart, a little meditation to bring us really into the center of our being. If it helps you, you may add a gesture with your hands or your entire body. Feel the body as it sits on the chair or wherever you sit. Bringing our awareness either to the breath and the body or to silence if that helps you. Or to that which is beyond the silence. Allowing a step into the unknown. And allowing to emerge whatever rises. To be there, show its face for a certain time and eventually also passes. and gives way to whatever else arises. May it be silence, may it be beyond silence, may it be any thought or feeling or question or concern. Even throughout our talk, I invite us to reconnect with that depth And whenever you are ready, you may want to open your eyes or have them half open or closed as you like. And I welcome everybody now to enter this journey of what does it mean to you that most intimate of all relationships Is there a discovery you want to communicate? Is there a question you want to bring up? You can feel free to put your questions in the chat, but if you want to unmute yourself for, for a quick question, we can do that too. I know Carola likes to see and I love to see everybody. So 
you can show yourself if you have a question and you'd like to just unmute yourself to ask. When did you start your dance journey? How old were you? I was about a teenager when I did gymnastics and then I did rock and roll. <laughs> And when I was 16, I met my dance teacher who very deeply inspired me, who was also my first spiritual teacher in my understanding. She has a different opinion, but it's a love argument between us. And only when I was 18, she told me that I would have the challenge to dance professionally and that she could help me to jump on the wave if I would like to do so. And why India? Why did you venture to India? I was living at the time in Cologne. I think I even mentioned that story in the last interview I gave with the Sacred Dance Guild. I tried to make it short. I was already working as a solo artist under that name, Devadasi Dance of the Heart, but I felt a stagnation and I was deeply asking for a next step because spiritually something else wanted to evolve than what I was already familiar with. Mm -hmm. So I got this answer from different uh, sources like meditation and an email from a friend There was this name Rishikesh. So it was a very clear hint. I was Googling what is Rishikesh to go to India. At that time, I had no clue why, but when I was there, I met the second day a spiritual master and I understood in satsang means sitting in the conscious, um, <laughs> sitting in your consciousness of your true self, like in commitment to listen to that true source of who we are. I understood that I have to twist something in my dancing that there's not one performer who tries everything to please people and an audience that is rather involved or not to make the audience involved involved sorry as much as the dancer and then this is when i started with the energy of people nice thank you oh my god you know what my battery of the computer is almost down to zero. <laughs> so as you listen and we ask your questions, I'm simultaneously plugging the computer in the source. <laughs> Hi, Carola, we had a, a comment online um, from Lucia and Lara, uh, Larry in response to your question. And it said, uh, being intimate with my life force, God, helps me best know myself and my purpose of living in this life um they shared that and then also earlier asked a question about where in germany your parents live they uh they have many ancestors in germany so we're curious my parents live in the at the border to switzerland just a moment Sorry about that, but now we are connected for sure. <laughs> uh, they still live there. My mom is 80, my dad is 85. So I grew up between Switzerland and Germany. Black Forest, Southern Black Forest. And what was there another question regarding the first part? They just, uh, they shared uh, an answer to your question. And it was uh, being intimate with my life force, God, mm -hmm. helps, me know, help, helps me best know myself and my purpose in living this, of living this life. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and isn't that a continuous discovery? What is my God? I have a comment about... Um, intimacy and it's something that you touched on with the horses because at, at the moment I'm sharing a very intimate moment with my cat yeah. and I feel like our it really is a gift 
from God that we can share intimacy with animals. And when animals allow us into a place um, where they trust us um, and we can connect with them and they, they don't judge like humans, there's a, um, such a vulnerability in that relationship with an animal. Um, they, they don't have logic or language in the same way that we do. So there's other ways that you communicate and it, it really is by touch and by a great sensitivity and a feeling of a, a soul connection that's very precious. So that, that's, I'm, I'm experiencing that at the moment. So it's, um, that's the one that comes to mind. Thank you so much for this contribution. I had a similar experience with a cat. And in my, in my experience, it always starts in spirit. The true meeting always starts in spirit. And yes, it may unfold in touch and an amazing intimacy, isn't it? There's a picture that comes to my mind. A master once said in his satsang, Sorry, I want to see all of you. Here we go. Um, he compared that life force, which maybe some of us call God. He said it moves through everything. There's not one something where it doesn't move through. It's like he, he used the picture of electronic equipment. There's the power and you plug the television and the you, you plug any of your devices into the same power and the same power moves through all, all there is. So also through the animals and because they have, as you described, such a different um, expression of being without that mind charge and judgmental parts that we have as human beings, it's, uh, it touches a... Uh, a very deep level. It looks like you were able to tame the white horse after all. Like he came up to you. He was in, he was interested in you and uh, it was a beautiful interaction. Just really striking, especially knowing the four story where, you know, he was quite wild and he intimidated you. And then in the end, um, your spirits connected for a while anyway. Yeah, it, it was magic that day also that the fog was there and the fog was hiding the fence behind that we didn't really want in the picture. <laughs> um, I can't say I tamed him, but I can say that there was, he's a great teacher. He's a great shaman even. He was, we were, we, we were mutually dancing and something was dancing through us. He was still wild. Of course, we edited the video. <laughs> we took the parts that he wasn't as naughty. Um, he would never harm, but he is a horse and he was wanting to play like with another horse. So we had to play with the boundaries and and because he is a Spanish stallion, he is very used to beautifully move and dance. And he had great fun to, to play. That came all from him. I, I didn't train him to do so. <laughs> uh, Lucia and Larry had another, uh, were wondering if you could um, name a few of the sacred sites in Germany or Switzerland uh, that carry special energy spirit connection for you. And also they were wondering about the name of the church that was in that uh, trailer. Yes. Um, in the trailer is a church that is a neighbor village of where I grew up, means the southern black forest close to the river Rhine. I can maybe later send to the sacred guild the names. Great. You could also find everything in the credits of the full film, which is available online. On also on DVD uh, because if I now tell you the names you will forget and there's another church that is also in the film close to that one which is a, 
a pilgrimage church for the Saint Notburga. She is a woman with nine children on her lap, which is very unusual in Christian Catholic church to have a female saint with many children. And the ninth is actually dead and eight are sitting alive on her lap. That's very close by. And I am not so deep into the sacred places because I am, my approach is more to create the sacred space in your heart. What is in the film and also in my heart alive is Assisi. It's the place of St. Francis and Santa Chiara, where I personally, personally feel very drawn to, to enjoy and tune into that very subtle blessing that is still in the, in the place. And there's also friends of mine have a community close by, it's Ananda from Kriyananda. You probably know because they have many also in America. And I, there's also seen where I dance in their temple of light and the energy is amazing, really amazing. The spirit simply takes you. Yeah. Caroli, can I ask, what's your next project? I do, I do want to say to everybody, we are hoping to host Carola's full film at some point in time as a Sacred Dance Guild event or something. Keep watch for that. But um, I wonder what your next project is. What are you looking at now as we look into the future? That's a big question. <laughs> um, <laughs> right at this moment, because I had spent a lot of externalized energy for the film project where I became the director, the producer, the distributor, the, and so on. All these professions that I am not really born for. Um, I am now in kind of a retreat where a big internal step is anticipated and it's almost too intimate to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but I can give you a hint of what I am yearning for, what I feel is really necessary. I was very much the doer in all of the production. And I felt I, I was in this responsibility of it's my child, it's been given to me, I have to bring it to the world. And now is the time to, to get out of the role of being the doer both in my own dance, like I am, I have been given a hint to listen to beyond the silence, as I mentioned before, and allow the dance to come from that place and leave many, many of the conditionings aside, which is quite a challenge as we know. And in dance is one step and in life is another step in our everyday routine to step at least a step beside the, the conditions that we have, also for survival. It's very uh, unusual to step out of the, person, the personality perspective or the person's perspective and what the person needs in order to feel safe. And outwardly, I am craving to have a place to, to offer what has been given to me, you could call it a school. I have been teaching in many places. And now is the time where I also want to invite people from all over the world to meet me in one place where I can set the energy. I'm, I give it up to the divine if that's meant to happen or not, if I am meant to keep on traveling, for example, to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> we have been talking about that before. <laughs> and there are several other pro concrete projects. For example, there was one with Namibia, even a film project. We wanted to do that. But that time I said, really, I will start only if they're sponsoring. I can't do the whole thing once again. I, I refuse. Like either a spirit wants and everything is being provided and it flows or I back off and, and have it been done without needing to become again the doer. 
Yeah. 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 I think I think many people have that sometimes internal struggle of being the doer or being able to just ride the wave of what's being done. And I so appreciate that you were the doer in this case because often it doesn't happen unless that one person in the center of that who has the whole vision can actually see it through. And that means doing a lot <laughs> and yeah. then resting. So I appreciate that you've done a lot and can rest. <laughs> and yes, coming to Canada is part of the future. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, may I ask a question? Um, so were there actually 12 years of footage in the film? Um, no, no, no. 12 years. I, I tried to count all the years between the inspiration and the real starting of, okay, now let's start. And only from that now let's start, I was looking for the cameraman and we started the journey together. I see. So from that moment, it was going very quick because I, have, I had lived the film and then we went through certain places of my life and we collected the harvest of what had been developed. But I, I had forgotten all about it, but suddenly it was like, yes, you yeah. remember there's some task to do. <laughs> and then, um, uh, Carola, did you have the, the arc of the story already in your head? Or once you had the footage, you created the fairy tale? I was asked several times by my friend and coach Eckhart, the film camera cinematographer person. He said, you have to write the story, even though it's in your heart, you have to write it. And once I did, he said, now you have to rewrite it. <laughs> so I did, the story was clear, the pictures were very clear. But as I described before, the pictures then given by life were quite different at times and others which I never could come up with had been given and others fell out. And especially the end was a huge challenge for me because I had it clear in feeling, but how to put it in picture. So we were experimenting and what was clear to me is that it has to be in the desert, it has to be in the sand because I kept having this image as you saw in the trailer when I was dancing in the dust if you um, grind enough, whatever obstacles, stones, edges come into your life, you know, as our daily practice, and we keep grinding and keep grinding, it becomes more and more subtle. I knew I had to end in the desert with the sand, not on the stone or on the rock. The first challenge was if you're whirling in the desert, you're going like a screw our screwdriver down. <laughs> so we had to put some little platform, some wooden platform. Otherwise I would go in the sand. And then I told Eckhart, okay, now you shoot that from this angle. Let's see if it works. And suddenly I slipped from this, from this wooden floor and I almost fell and I was laughing. And when we looked at the footage, I said, that's it, that moment when you know we can achieve or we can strive like the filmmaking or as you are in ballet you strive for the perfection of the form because this is the pure vessel that you want to offer for the spirit to to give form but again we can't make it we can't achieve the perfection and then is the letting go and let it happen so i decided okay that's the cue that's the key so I, I decided to fall all the way down the dune in the sand and, and this of letting go is, has become our end in the end. <laughs> I'd love to hear more of all of you. <laughs> we have a little more time, so please don't feel shy. Enter. <clears throat> Hi. 
Uh, I'm not sure how my audio is, so I wrote another question in the box. They have a lot of questions. Okay, Lucy. Mostly about the part in the trailer with the whore. Yeah. So, because your audio is slightly distorted, technically, maybe I can read it. Um, she asked if uh, you could explain a little more about the term whore. You missed the translation and, and couldn't hear uh, the dialogue in the trailer. Yes. Thank you for bringing this up because it's a very important aspect of the film and also of my life. I, I make a little loop to come to your question, to the answer of your question. When I was starting to dance in secret places like churches, for example, sometimes within the service, sometimes outside, apart from the service, I could tell that people felt confronted. They were looking at a body, they were looking at the woman moving, and sometimes I could feel the energy was not only uh, supportive, but critical. Is this now an invalidation to my holy sacred space? What is happening here? And it has been an issue in my step from being a dancer to becoming a temple dancer. I call it temple or the house of God. And I had this project and no matter in which kind of temple I entered, you need to be very cautious about what movement is appropriate and what movement might be an invalidation. And still it can happen no matter how careful you are. So when there is body, there is vital energy. There is also sexuality, of course, whether it be in the mind of the people who witness or whether it is the vital force that comes and rises as you are moving. It's like uh, in India, you see these snakes dancing, a snake also as a symbol for many times for sexuality. And if it is aligned in spirit, it dances beautifully and nobody thinks of poisoning or of, of a danger that is harmful, but more of medicine. So there was this, there was this uh, challenge in my own life to find um, answers. What is my what is my relationship to sexuality? What is my relationship to uh, like when I am dancing? It is my prayer. I couldn't. I, I always found that, or it is my meditation. And now coming to the term with this professor from Innsbruck. He has studied peace all over the world and through the ages. And he came to the understanding that in cultures where there were some rituals, where the energy between male and female was balanced, also sometimes in ritualistic, uh, sorry, my English, in the, um, in rituals like even if they integrated sexuality not personally but yes uh, in a rit ritualistic way is that how you say um there was most peace in those communities and he also said that there was a time when ladies were in the temples dancing for the great goddess. She was a very fertile goddess, goddess and prosperity was one of her big gifts. So the ladies were dancing in honor to the great goddess and they were called Harines or ha he, he mentioned different names. And so the temple dancers were called Hare, Hori, Huri and out of that came later the term Hor. And in the beginning, Hor was not what we now think it is. Same, by the way, with Devadasi. Devadasi means the female servant of God. And it was the temple priestess, the temple dancer. And in our days, many people think Devadasi is a whore, is a, is a prostitute, is a lady who is quite fallen in terms of her... her 
grace, if I may say so. I'm sure they are prostitutes in all directions. But uh, prostitution usually is that, that has that bad connotation of something has been sold or given away that is actually very precious and very intimate and very not to be taken by any money. So in my life, it was very important, I think, for a karmic reason to say, listen, there's a misunderstanding. One thing is not like the other. There is temple prostitution, which is horrible. I don't want to go in all these pictures. And there is temple dance, which is a striving for that inner fire to burn for the highest. And there are different expressions. Personally, you know, people have different expressions of how to serve that honest heart or, or fire in your heart. So that's what he says in the trailer there. It was a, a title of respect, the whore, and it became a title of like a, um, yeah, with a different connotation. I would say, uh, Carola, that a lot of people in this organization, many of them do dance in places of worship, churches, temples, synagogues, and many have had that experience and had to live with that dichotomy of how do you explain that to people? How do you help people see what's coming from the heart and the soul and not just the body or what their ideas are? So I think there are some, thank you so much for that very profound explanation. And maybe since you are in that practice, maybe you already do, or it is an inspiration for you to make whatever energies you perceive in the so-called audience or participants as the material for your dance. You can integrate that and even transform it with your prayer and movement and heart activity and raise the energy or direct it to the heart and to awakening. That's actually coming to one of your first questions, why India? At that moment, when I was honest on stage in an, in an evening performance without choreography, I came to a point where if I would have been honest, there would have been no more movement. So, but people paid entrance fee and wanted to see dance. So I was in this conflict, what to do? Just playing nice, but that's not deep and honest enough. So from this conflict was born, yes, of course, now I look at you and I dance with that energy that I perceive. First, I was not saying it, I was doing it secretly. <laughs> And later on, I said, who would like me to dance for him or her individually, one by one? And then the entire energy changes. Because people know, oops, now it's about me. Do I want to show myself or rather, or rather hide in the crowd? Do I want to look in the mirror reflection of what appears or back off? And, and that was the big key to change the energy in the, in the community to bring everybody in that fire of the heart. What a wonderful idea, suggestion, thought that is really transformational. We have about three or four minutes left. So if anybody wants to get your last question and if it's been percolating and you haven't turned the microphone on, this is your moment. <laughs> Lucia has her ankle bells, I see. <laughs> Thank oh, you. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. Maybe we shall have a, a one minute dance, everybody together. Yes, we could, everybody. One minute dance would be great. I'm doing, John and I will do a photograph of everybody. So we need that before we finish. Let's have that. Everybody. May it be a gesture or a dance in silence, yeah. connecting yeah. from everybody. heart. <laughs> heart. Everybody. Free. In interplay, we actually do a dance where we do a blessed, where we bless the person who has asked us to dance for them. So, so let's bless each other as we 
finish this second interview of ours. I've taken a snap. I think Dawn is in the back taking snaps. And hello to Helena down there on my corner. Helena did the original interview with Carola that is on the YouTube channel. So you will definitely, if you haven't seen that, you will be watching it now. Thank you so, so much. Heart dance. May your blessing be heard and your prayers. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. I would like to, before we, before we finish, may I just say that, um, Corolla's uh, DVD and VOD is available now. Um, and I will type into the chat, but it's at www.infinite.dance is her website. And um, so they're available now, the English version and the German version. Thank you, Mary Lee. <laughs> what is the name of the movie again? Moving into the infinite. That's right. And there's information on the website when Carol is interview and uh, so you can find it anywhere or be in touch with us. I am so, so, so grateful for this time. It has been such a lovely meandering journey this morning. I so appreciate uh, who you are, Carola, and who you are with us. So thank you for your gift to the Sacred Dance Guild. We appreciate thank it. Round of thank applause. You. All of you. Yeah. <laughs> To everybody and don't forget tomorrow we have another interview i put it in the chat if you want to come to mark and gillis do let me know and uh, we'll keep going this is a this is the dance of life that we're dancing so we're all on that journey together much love to you carola and we'll see you in canada next <laughs> that's my little wish <laughs> let everybody go for now so thank you we'll see you at the next events and continue thank you so much thank you. bye everybody thank you bye Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. As you all say goodbye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful seeing everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>